This episode of Android Authority is brought to you by Carbonite. Go to Carbonite.com and use the promo code AUTHORITY for a free trial. The Galaxy Note 3, the Xperia Z Ultra, and some delicious key lime pie? Hey, it's Joshua Vigar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And it sounds like it's time for another dose of the week's top Android news. It's Android Authority Weekly. We start off with a lot of rumors regarding the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. Korean news sites reported that the component orders for the Note 3 should be starting by the end of August. Now this came as not much of a surprise because IFA at Berlin happens at the beginning of September. However, there was a little bit of confusion when it came to the screen. CEV leaks tweeted that the Note 3 would have a 5.7 inch screen, which is a little bit of a minimal increase from the 5.5 inch Note 2. It then followed that Samsung would be producing the Galaxy Note 3 with Super AMOLED and LCD variants. While this made some sense considering production costs, it then followed just one day later that instead, Samsung would be outfitting the Note 3 with a Super AMOLED flexible display. Why the jump to flexible displays? Well, perhaps Samsung wants to show that it can still truly innovate. Or maybe LG's own flexible displays are really just on the horizon. One thing is for certain though regarding the Galaxy Note 3. We don't really know a whole lot for certain. Sony did bring some real releases in their big event this week. As was expected, the Xperia Z got a big update in the Xperia Z Ultra. This behemoth of a phone has a 6.4 inch full HD LCD that has a lot of tech inside to further enhance your viewing experience. It even got a big update in performance with the Snapdragon 800 that is clocked in at 2.2 gigahertz. Perhaps the most interesting feature is its ability to take any pen or pencil and treat it like a stylus. This water and dust resistant monster will be out in quarter three of this year. No pricing has been given. If you've been waiting for some smartwatch development, Sony also had your back this week with the announcement of the smartwatch 2. This aluminum clad watch features a 1.6 inch touchscreen and doesn't need to be paired to any Android device in order to remain useful. Everything from answering calls to tracking fitness will be possible with a large library of apps. It is slated to be released in September, but no pricing has been given. Just for reference though, the current smartwatch by Sony is still priced at around $100. And finally from Sony, we have rumors of the Onami phone. Sony later this week still has a press event in Paris, and this might be its focus. The Onami, or the Xperia i1, is slated to have a 5-inch screen, the Snapdragon 800 processor, and a 20-megapixel camera. That press event invite that we showed you last time then was actually not the Xperia ZU. So we're just going to have to wait until July 4 to see what else Sony has for us in the future. You asked and Google delivered. The Samsung Galaxy S4 and HTC One Google Play editions officially landed this week to the excitement of many. Now you can get two of the top smartphones in the market with the pure Nexus experience. Of course, that also means that you're not going to get the special software that Samsung and HTC put in like S Health or BlinkFeed. If you order now, the devices will ship on July 9th and come in at $599 for the HTC One and $649 for the Samsung Galaxy S4. But wait, hold up. It seems you can't really please everybody, and those prices were the start of some new troubles. Our very own Nate Swanner examined why there wasn't a mass migration to these new versions of the HTC One and Samsung Galaxy S4. In a nutshell, the Nexus 4 was already a great device at a great price, so it seems a little ridiculous for everyone to have to pay full price for these new Google Play Edition phones. Well, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. We got some interesting news from the Wall Street Journal this week regarding Google's next moves. Apparently Google is hoping this fall to be releasing their own smartwatch, their own gaming console similar to the Ouya, and an update to the Nexus Q. Now the smartwatch and the gaming console do make some sense, but it's a little odd to see that Google's going back to the drawing board on the pretty much failed Nexus Q. We won't know until more details come out. One interesting tidbit though was that Google is planning on allowing Android to power more than just smartphones and tablets pretty soon. Speaking of Android, the WSJ also hinted at the upcoming release of the next version, Key Lime Pi. Apparently dubbed K-Edition internally, this version 5.0 of Android is supposedly slated to be released this fall. Even more interesting is the idea that Key Lime Pi could be supported by older hardware, which is a move that would definitely help Android's fragmentation problem. Now these are all obviously unconfirmed bits of information, but what is exciting about it is that we can keep our fingers crossed to see if the rest of 2013 will be as awesome as all these rumors suggest. 
And finally, we may not be getting Keyline Pi for a little while, but Android 4.3 looks to be on the horizon. A flashable test firmware that is compatible with the Samsung Galaxy S4 leaked online this week. Apparently, there aren't too many changes in this version of Android, but if you are feeling adventurous, you can take your rooted device over to androidauthority.com and learn how to get it. The main change in Android 4.3, however, can easily be yours. Found in the HTC One and Samsung Galaxy S4 Google Play Edition devices, damn, that's a mouthful, is the inclusion of an updated camera. There aren't that many changes to the camera itself, but the app has been given a new touch interface that uses arches rather than full circles. The good news is that the camera was extracted from these two devices and was put into a standalone APK, which makes it an easy download and install. Again, head over to androidauthority.com if you want to learn more. And so, there you have it for this edition of Android Authority Weekly. A written companion for this video can be found in the description below. Don't forget to check out our other weekly feature, Android Authority Q&A, hosted by Chris. For next week's edition, meet me back here at the same time and same place. Android Authority, because we're your source for all things Android.